All Together is the final video in the four-part series, The Journey from Good to Great. Throughout this video series, we took the time to slow down, step back, and ask ourselves some tough questions. Let's take a look at where we started. First, we started by taking time in the beginning of the school year to review and discuss the core values and philosophy of the Early Childhood Program. This process should be completed annually as it allows for veteran teachers to reflect on their own personal teaching philosophy with the larger programs, as well as can support new teachers in understanding the context for their work. When thinking about teaching practices and strategies being used to support children, it is necessary to align them with the program's underlying principles of how children develop and learn. We encourage you to take a closer look at your program's philosophy, have some dialogue with your colleagues, and reflect on how your day-to-day -day practices align with those principles. Next, we slow down to think about the impact relationships with children and families have on the overall success and experience of children in the program and ways teachers can connect with children and engage in meaningful conversations. Research clearly shows the important role relationships play in the early childhood classroom. Quality early childhood teachers respect the role relationships have and understand putting time into building positive relationships must be embedded within the broader curriculum so that children are in the right state for learning. Once we establish some of the foundational pieces that intertwine throughout our day-to-day -day work, we were ready to take a step back and think through the process of planning intentionally in order to take advantage of extended learning opportunities. We have seen how being fully present and connecting with children truly impacts a teacher's ability to plan engaging and meaningful activities that will promote learning for each and every child. Let's listen to the staff from the Moline Early Childhood Center as they reflect on their journey from good to great. When I try to uh, quiet the static, I try to make sure that my room is organized with the activities that I've planned for the day. I don't want to have to go searching for something because then that will take me away from the children and what, I'm, and what they are doing. So first thing I try to do is to be organized. Uh, and then when the children come in, I just, when I first see their faces, it's like, okay, we're doing this now, and I greet them, and we're off. Well, in my classroom, uh, there's always a buzzy, a very busy flurry of activity, and so it is important for us as educators to be able to uh, kind of uh, quiet the static that we hear uh, throughout the day. And so one of the ways that we as educators can uh, quiet that static is just to um, take a moment and take a deep breath. Sometimes it helps uh, to put on classical music in my classroom, for example, just to kind of create more of a calming atmosphere, but also um, in interacting with children to take a pause, take a deep breath, think about what the children are telling me or what I'm observing uh, the children doing in order to um, initiate a conversation or perhaps offer assistance if they're needing help with something. When you make the connection with the children and everybody is present, you can see their faces kind of light up. I think so many of them due to some of their issues or due to some of the hectic schedules that families have. I don't think kids maybe are sometimes felt like, feel like they are being listened to. So sometimes if they'll say something, some little thing, and I go, oh, really? Did you do such and such, whatever it might be? And they'll look at me like, wow, you did listen. Thank you. They don't maybe articulate it that way, but in their face, you could get any of the shoulders kind of go down. It's like, all right, somebody is getting me. It's not just me against the world. And I think that's a real important thing that everybody needs to know, but especially little people starting out. I've made the switch to connecting more instead of, you know, doling out the, the consequence because it, it works so much better 
the, the child is, is comfortable with me, they know that there's not going to be a consequence, they just need to, they need to talk to me, they need to tell me how they're feeling, what the problem is, um, how we can work through the problem. Um, it, it just, it, it, it's so much less stressful on me, on the child, if we can just talk and work through the problem together and make that connection and figure out a solution to the problem. Um, looking at personal connections uh, with children, I think it's so rewarding once we are in to the routines, we've established um, the rules in the, in the classroom, we talk about how we you know, treat one another, those kinds of things. Then, then we're able to really look at each child as an individual. And I think that's so key to making the connection because every one of our uh, friends in our classroom has something to share. Each one is unique. Uh, each one has uh, a certain set of personality traits that really shine through when they, they feel comfortable in the classroom. And so it's just really rewarding to be able to connect with them and learn more about their personality to learn uh, what are their interests, what, what are the things that they really enjoy that they can bring into the classroom and kind of enhance the learning for everyone. Well, I think to make the individual connection with each child, here again it goes back, I listen to them, I talk to them. They come in and, and they're making comments about something that they did at home or something that they really like. You engage in conversation with that. They pick up on and they start to feel, oh, they really care about me. And they, be, they, trust, they begin to trust you. And you can build up a trust. You can build up a rapport. Uh, you're, if you're respectful with them, you know, you make eye contact with them. Um, you, by talking with them that way, I think that really helps connect with them. If they say something to you and you're looking someplace else or you're, you know, you're not attending to them, they pretty well know to walk away from you and, and they're not so ready to come up and talk to you after that. So I just think you need to take the time, you need to make eye contact, you need to be respectful of what they're saying, uh, and I think all that helps connect with each child. One of my children is very interested in making books and she just really gets involved in the process. And she uses letters and she creates shapes and just different kinds of materials in, in making books. Looking at that as a personal connection with, with myself, she and I have been able to plan for extended learning just because she has all these wonderful ideas for, oh, what if we use these materials? We could maybe uh, make another type of book. She, she suggested using a camera and take pictures in the classroom and then incorporate those photos into a book. And so just by making that personal connection with her based on her interest, individual interest, we've been able to extend the learning for everyone in the classroom. With the in-services that we've been to concerning lesson planning, I have um, really noticed more how I focus on each part of the day. Um, and with having a blended classroom, how I can specifically make their goals within my day without being obvious to them, um, that we can, I can get that in with every, it doesn't just have to be a small group time, that you could slide in accounting if that's a goal that one of my students has. One of my plans for next year is to have the benchmarks up for the given various centers so my assistant knows what we're doing. So um, the speech and language person, OTPTs, when they come in, so we all know what the goal is for the, each of the centers. I think that's very important. My background as special ed, I've had to learn, and Starnet's been fantastic with helping with that learning, how to set up rooms in a preschool fashion, so it's more preschool fashion with centers rather than in the special ed mode of delivery, which I did for a long time. Intentional teaching are things that I have planned activities for the children to do so they can develop their social skills, so they can develop their uh, 
their math skills, their literacy skills, their uh, language development. Those things are all rolled into what I, what I, what I plan for the children to do every day. Uh, things I think about when I'm when I sit down to make my plans, I think about uh, topics that might be current if we're depending on the time of the year if we're studying something outside, if we right now we're studying caterpillars, so and seeds and growing things, we it might it'll have a lot to do with where we're going on field trips, field experiences. We went to the botanical center. I have some boys that are very interested in building, so I'm. I, some tr I try to bring in pictures of buildings. Um, we sit down and they write their plans. So we're, we're talking about what architects do. So they have their own blueprint and then they use that blueprint to make their building and then we go back and we look at it, we take pictures of it, they explain what they've done that day. Uh, sometimes it's working on what they might need to do like language development. Maybe some child really needs some help with their social skills. So those are the kinds of things I think about, you know, when making my plans. Well, looking at assessment of individual students, it really enhances my learning as a teacher. I am learning so much, so many things about the children when I'm observing them or when I'm um, talking with them. I am gaining so much information about what they know right now. And that is so important to know what, at what level are they at right now? And how can I meet them halfway? How can I scaffold that learning to extend what their knowledge is? How can I uh, look at that information and extend it to teaching. It's an important piece. You know where the, what the child is doing. You know where, what, they're, what they're doing right now. But you need to assess where that is and um, where, where you, where you want to take that child. Are they at the very beginning of a skill or development? And where do you want them to move? And so then what do you need to do to get them to move that, that way? So that will play into what kinds of activities do I need to plan in order for that child to move towards that area you want them to be in. I think that's really a key component when we look at um, authentic assessment. And once we've made that connection with a child, I think our assessment becomes that much more valid because we know these children, we understand their personality, we understand what their strengths are, and I think it's important for the children to understand, this is my strength, this is something I can do already, or this is something I wanna learn how to do. And once we recognize the combination of what my expectations are for them, as well as their own expectations for what they want to learn. And we're also uh, building on what they already know. Reflection is such a key to being able to make those future plans. Um, it's so important to take that time and really look at, oh, how, how did this activity work? What worked with this activity? Did we accomplish what we wanted to accomplish? Um, were the children engaged, for example? Um, did we discover something new? Is there something that maybe I hadn't thought of before when I was in the planning process? Maybe I hadn't thought about some aspect of what we were, what we were learning about um, was something just not interesting to the children that maybe as a teacher when I'm planning I thought hmm, I think this would be interesting for the children and maybe based on their individual uh, interests they were not really impressed with the activity so maybe we need to make some adjustments right 
And I think it's just so important to, to think back on that, oh, maybe there's a different way I can approach this next time. Or maybe it worked great. Maybe the children were really engaged to the point where they want to learn more about this activity. They want to learn more about butterflies. They want to talk about other creatures that fly. Maybe they want to extend it to learning about birds or some other aspect of nature. So uh, it's just really important to, to look back on things, see how it went, and, and figure out is, is there something we need to make changes or adjustments or, or maybe we want to continue and, and expand on it. Reflection, I, it gives me an opportunity to find out what's worked, maybe what I need to fine tune, maybe uh, am I, do I need to do something a little bit more for a, a child to help bring them along. Those are the kinds of things I, when I reflect on how things have gone that day, Photographs help me a lot. Um, I might jot down a note or a name. I might save their work that they've, that they've done. I listen to my paras and I listen to find out if they've noticed anything or I ask them to tell me what they have seen about a, maybe a, spe, a certain child that day. Or, so a combination is, I, I don't think there's any one thing you can do to say that's how you're going to reflect. I think you need a combination of the different things to help you get a, a, a clear picture. The reflections, as a teacher, the reflections, they help me look at things. How could I, how could I be, how could I do this activity better? Um, did I ask the right questions? Um, was there a way to extend this activity that I didn't think of? Maybe I could think of that now. Um, how did this child react? Um, do I need to work with, you know, a child on this skill more often? Um, this is children. Uh, this child already have this skill in place, so we need to move on. Um, has he mastered the skill? So uh, I reflect on a lot of what what the students are learning and what they're showing me. When I look at reflection, when I'm thinking about reflection, I'm not thinking about reflection. It's something that I think about constantly. And sometimes I make adjustments in my teaching as I'm teaching. When we are maybe introducing some new concept and, and I'm reading a story and we're talking about new vocabulary, for example, sometimes I can tell by observing the children that this might be too much information. Maybe I need to step back a little bit. Or maybe we need a visual, some kind of visual aid. And so there are times I make adjustments based on reflection that happens while I'm teaching. Other times I make reflections at the end of the class period, which often happens at the end of the, mo the morning, and I can make those adjustments in the afternoon. I reflect on the year, the school year. At this time of year when it's almost time to uh, send most of my students to kindergarten. It's a really great opportunity for me to say, wow, look at the growth in these children. Look how much they have been able to use their personality and they've been able to express themselves. And look how they've been able to expand on their learning, for example. Uh, what are some things that really worked this year? And I think that is so important before we start the school year in the fall to write those down because I think it is important to keep record of those things that we really think worked well and we want to maintain those activities or we want to uh, showcase certain aspects that the curriculum uh, gives us that, that really made a connection. A good piece of advice, I think, for a new teacher would be don't be afraid to try things. The first thing might not work out, or the first thing that you want to do or to try to be present might not work for you. 
So keep looking for the combination that's going to get you there, that's going to get you so you can focus on the children, so you can build that trust with them. The best advice I can give a teacher who's just starting out, um, who has just uh, started their own classroom, is to uh, be confident in your abilities, understand that there are things that you will need to work on, that uh, you can gain a lot of information by getting to know your children in your classroom, make those connections, use humor, uh, use your own interests, what your personal interests are. If there's something that you're really passionate about, share that with your students. Let them understand that you are an individual, that you see them as individuals, and that learning is fun, that we can play to learn, and know that you it will come. The experience that you have will help you in planning for instruction, in, for ma in making assessments, in reflecting on how you're teaching. That will come with experience. And know that you don't have to be able to do all of that perfectly the first year. But the key is to make those connections with children and then take it from there. Over the course of a school year, Cheryl McKenney, a resource specialist with Starnet, had the opportunity to observe the progress made by the team at Jefferson Early Childhood Center. Let's listen as Cheryl reflects on her classroom observations. I've had the privilege of working with the staff at Jefferson Early Childhood Center for the past couple of years. I've noticed many changes in the teachers as they have embarked on this journey from good to great. In the beginning, they tackled some important questions when they developed their philosophies about teaching young children. Since that moment, I've noticed many examples of growth, reflection, and intentionality. When I have visited, I've noticed the teachers using specific strategies for being present in the moment and connecting with the children. For example, I noticed teachers taking a pause to eliminate that static and I've noticed the teachers reflecting with their paraprofessional in their classroom about how to be more present. Their conversations with children are rich and involve more language and reasoning. Their conversations are about experiences a child may have had over the weekend or some special event in the child's life. One group of children had a lengthy conversation with their teacher about the movie Frozen. They talked about their favorite characters, but then, over time, that extended into how items become frozen. The teachers are also using higher level questions such as, what do you think will happen if you put this block on top? Or, since we don't have any more large blocks, what could you use instead? When the children are sorting objects such as rocks, the teacher asks, tell me how you sorted these because it may not be apparent to the teacher. These conversations have led to the development of strong relationships with the children, and I've noticed how they use their knowledge about the children to enhance their planning. One example I observed was after a visit to a local museum, the children were very interested in the veterinarian items. And from that field trip, the children and teacher developed a vet clinic in part of the dramatic play area, and that was due to the children's interest. It was so interesting to watch the depth of their play. They had a receptionist and children brought a stuffed animal to see the vet. And it was so nice to see these children stand in line to wait for appointment. One little boy waited for over three minutes to see the receptionist. And this was self-regulation they didn't have to plan. They had real x-rays and stethoscopes and some unusual pets such as a stuffed snake. One teacher noticed that the blocks were not being used very often. When some changes were made, the teacher saw more block building and more intricate structures. The teachers planned to make some small changes to have the blocks and accessories more visible and accessible made a significant impact. As I talk with teachers at Jefferson, I have observed how they are taking the time to pause and to really reflect on their own teaching practices. They are aware of the children's body language and their verbal responses. They have worked to improve their classroom environments. 
they have used a professional development day to work together to see how all the pieces between their curriculum, the Illinois Early Learning and Development Standards, and developmentally appropriate practices, along with professional development, fit together. They are always reflecting and making necessary changes and or adaptations to meet the needs of the children they are working with. This group is committed to ongoing professional development and it's been exciting to watch them implement new ideas and strategies to promote success in their classrooms. The staff at Jefferson Early Childhood Center are very fortunate to have a principal with an early childhood background. She has worked and supported all of the teachers and the staff as they have traveled on this journey from good to great.